welcome to my journey to 2000 ELO on chess.com. I'm currently sitting at 1843, and let's find an opponent. Okay, we get an 1891 in the black pieces again. Let's play the Karl Khan against e4. And will we get an exchange? Do we get another advance? So early c5, bot Vinic Karls. Opponent plays c3. Play knight c6. And they get the bishop out. And I'm trying to remember correctly. How to punish this. I know queen b6 is a move. And I think it might be the best one. So the idea of queen b6 is to put pressure on this bishop and make it take. And also threaten to potentially take here. They can go queen b3, but then I just go a6 and still forces the same thing. Yeah. The question is whether or not I want to take with the queen or the pawn. And everything in me says queen. But I also, there is some argument to be made to keep the queen on this B file. But I, I don't think it's a super compelling argument. So this might be one of those scenarios where I go knight e7 and then knight c6. The only, I guess the benefit of taking with the b-pawn is I had takes and then I could push c5 twice to break. Now I'm going to pin the knight. And opponent plays h3. I kind of want to keep the bishop, honestly. He doesn't have the light square bishop. I'm going to I'm gonna hang on to the bishop for now. If he plays g4, he plays g4. Go bishop g6. It's kind of annoying to have this knight pinned here. And I'll play e6. I'm in no hurry to take here. Knight e7 seems good. I don't have knight f5 though. That does get forked. Oh, and then I, but then I have this bailout move. So I do have that. I think I want to take here though, but then he can take, he can't take with the knight actually. I'm getting a little bit, I'm taking a risk I think by taking this pawn because it does open up the C file and I'm not close to castling. So he can take apparently, but then can I take that on? No, I have to take the queen. He takes my queen, I take with the b-pawn. Mm. Is there a different... I don't think there's anything else I can do. This was not good. Actually, can I go back and threaten the exchange? Then he can just attack my piece. He just moves. And then I still have to take the knight. I can avoid the bishop trade and he can keep his knight. If he, if I want, but he is threatening the a pawn. Ah, eh, whatever. I guess I just develop. Maybe even go c five at some point. He's threatened to take the bishop. I guess. See where he wants to put his bishop. It's looking like this might peter out into an end game where I have maybe, you could argue, slightly better pawn structure. I think I should take this bishop. This is not ideal. I'm going to get the rook onto this b file. And then I think maybe I could play g6 and get the bishop right here to attack this pawn. Or maybe even g5. G5 looks pretty good because then it prevents F4. So G5. I'm not really attacking the pawn though. I actually like C5 here. I like C5. Let's get the bishop activated that way. 
And if he doesn't take, I take, and then I take. If he takes, I take. And we have isolated pawns here. A5. I can go rook b5. And then a5 is a thing. Then he has a4. And then I just go back. If he plays a4, I go back. And then I still have takes. The problem with a5 right now is he can just take it. But is that a problem? Then I go rook a8 and I hit that pawn. And he doesn't really have a way to save it, but he can claim the b-file. Yeah, that's the problem is he gets the b-file. Rook e7 runs, or bishop e7 runs into rook g3. Do I like d4? d4 takes, takes, he lines up the rook on the d-pawn. I don't like d4, I don't think. I guess I just play g6 if he plays rook b3. And then I want to go king d7 maybe? I think I want to go king d7. Oh wow, he's just going to let me get d4 like this. That seems absurd. Now I have a passed pawn. I no longer want to go king d6. I, I want to go f6 I think. Okay, I kind of want to go king d7 now. Or I can take here. If I take here, he takes. And then I can take. Then he takes the a pawn. I kind of need to go... What is the point here? Let me think about this before I make a move that's not good. I guess I can still castle. Like, castling is an option. And probably a good option. Because I need my rooks connected, but I don't want my king on d7. Like, I, I kind of wanted a more active king, and I was trying to go for a, a no castle setup. But I don't think it's good enough. So on, on uh, b takes c, I'm going to take with the bishop and protect this pawn. I think c4 was a big mistake by the opponent. Whether or not it's uh, something that I can fully take advantage of and realize is another question altogether. Yeah, and I think this is even a mistake. What is the point here? You want to go here and create a fast spawn? I mean, it doesn't seem very good. I think f6 looks good. Rook d8 makes a lot of sense. Bishop g5 to try to trade the knight off allows me to play a6. A6 is not good though. I like f6. And then I can push, maybe maybe I can push e5. 6. Can I just reroute the bishop to attack this? Like what if, what if I go here and then here? Can I just take this pawn for free now? Like he, does he want to go here? Is that a thing? Yeah, okay. So knight e4 is a problem. F6 takes, takes, 94. I just go back. I'm going to play F6. It's threatening to solidify this central pawn. If he plays F4, then so be it. Just realize the opponent's not using much time at all. Opponent's from Ghana. I like their flag. Okay, so completely ignoring that. I don't think the passed pawn on the queen side is strong enough, like the one he could create. But I suppose if I take, he's got this, but then I can just put the bishop on d6 and then go here. Yeah, I mean, like right now I have bishop d8 to c7. I also have bishop g4 or h4. Bishop d8 to c7, I think, is the way to go to prevent this pass pawn. If there's one thing I don't like about my position, it's the placement of the pawns on the dark squares. So I can go maybe rook c8 if I want to. I go back, pushes, takes, takes. 
rook b7 with the other rook coming to b8 and then he has rook a6 doesn't work rook c8 b6 push or uh push takes takes and then rook b b7 guarding the bishop here and then he has the same thing so the question is do i give up the i don't think i give up the pawn i think i got to do the weird thing with the pawn getting really advanced i can also play knight f4 and then push this pawn maybe take this pawn i think maybe i should have gone rook b7 last move like maybe rook b7 and then rook b8 and then he couldn't take he couldn't push and then i could take yeah rook b7 rook b8 was the better play here now i'm just i think i'm going to be a tempo behind to do that plan but actually i think he let me do it now because once he once i get my rook to b8 i can then push a6 and then he's got to push is that good no that's not good Ooh, i like this better now he's kind of stuck so the question is, do I go rook d7 or rook b6? Rook b6, I can then swing over to d6. So rook b6, rook d6 blocks this pawn. Sorry if you could hear those cars. Well, I guess trucks are so loud. The question is whether or not I worry about him pushing. Because rook, rook b6 makes sense. Rook d7 also makes sense. But if I go rook d7 and he pushes, then I have to take, he's got this pass pawn. So I don't like that. I don't like that at all. But now I can get behind the D pawn, potentially. It's just the C pawn that's the problem. I can put my bishop here and if knight jumps in, I always have rook C8. I could also forget about the E pawn like the extra e pawn. I have an, a tactic that I could play here too with rook b8. He takes this pawn. He take this pawn, takes, takes, but then I need this knight to be moved. So I could go rook or knight g, knight, rook. Bishop g5, he plays knight e4. I go, oh, I can't have access to that square. Never mind. Bishop d7 runs into knight e4. And then I gotta go like bishop. No, this doesn't work. So the question is, do I even want to try to keep the e pawn? I think I go this way. I go bishop f6, and then I can go rook c8 if I need. This is the most logical continuation for me. Because if knight comes in and then he takes, I just take. And then I, I solidify this nice center and move my king up. I'm using too much time though. My opponent is way up on the clock. Now I can go g6 though and drop back though. I don't have to trade for the knight. I could also bring the other rook back because it doesn't, he's not really looking to trade there. I'll set up this tactic so I can do this if he moves the knight. Okay, I'm not sure what that's about. Let's bring the king up, I guess. Yeah, let's move the rook here, take here. It still doesn't work. I kind of need to... Nah, I don't need to do anything at the moment. Let's just move the king. So he can take, clearly, but... My concern was if he goes here next goes rook g7 or rook g3 to come to rook g7 but i can just go back with the king that seems logical i mean this is looking like a pretty straightforward draw i think i don't know that i have any way to to push these pawns effectively 
He's blocking the attack on the pawn. I can't really ever move. I mean, I don't really need to be there anymore. I can come over here. But I can also just play h6. Kick it behind the d-pawn and start pushing it. All right, so bishop h4, not an ideal move because he has this move, but I don't see how he attacks the bishop. He, he, it would take him a couple moves, and I can play h6. But I can try to trade a rook. If I, I think the more pieces that come off the board, the more likely. Like, if I can get trade one rook. I think his, his threats on the queen side are very low, like low risk. And if I can trade one rook, I think we're in good shape. But then he can take this pawn. Pawn it disconnected. Hopefully that's not an issue. I also have g5. G5, but then my bishop is just like locked in on h4. My rook on b6 sucks. Like it's just trapped there. I need to come back to b8. So next, my plan is rook b8, rook f8. Or rook b8, rook c7, rook f8. That way I can keep the, the c pawn, c5 pawn under control. Oh, that's a bummer. That is a bummer. Let's look at the game. I feel bad for the opponent. He got disconnected. I guess the internet where he lives maybe just cut out or I don't know. I can't imagine unless he just got busy. Like maybe he's playing at work. He played an 89 and I played an 84. And I was losing. I felt like I was winning. <laughs> I was losing there. Um, so I kind of snuck away with some elo. Let's see. As always, we'll take a look at the opening first. And queen b6 is a good line. e6 is also okay. b takes is more common. Yeah. I kind of felt that after I took that, my queen should have been on the dark squares, and it makes it harder to develop this bishop. So I'm going to take with the b-pawn next time I play this. But we... uh. We got a game, you know, it's not like we were rushing or anything. C4 actually is better. That makes sense. C4 and then go after the B-pawn, maybe. C or C4, B5, B4, start chipping away at the queen side. And then you have this bishop covering B4. Yeah, I think that would be better. So he's got this bishop here, and I, I actually helped him open it up. So taking was a big mistake, I think. Because I didn't think he could take because his knight is pinned. But his knight is attacking my queen, too, so... And then we played some normal-looking moves. A5 was better. But I thought, hey, let's just take this bishop off the board. Uh, rook b8 is on the radar. Bishop b7 is better. So bishop b7. So c5 is not a bad move. It's the third, second best move. Now bishop b7, which is what I played. a5 is on there. a5 I didn't think worked. I was afraid of b takes a. And then it says c4. Before. Oh, and you're unleashing an attack on this pawn so that the rook can't move easily and this rook can't defend easily. That's a very... So a5 was based on the fact that you saw a c4 and that the rook can't get to this file easily without losing a pawn himself. So they, they would forfeit both a pawns just to, to, to get the b file. That seems hard to for me to see. So I'm not unhappy plus uh, c4 immediately is also a good move so I thought this was absurd actually and c takes b4 is best but I thought I was d5 
or d4 not best or rook d3 rook d3 huh d3 because the best move is to take here oh rook b3 And he did play rook b3, which makes sense. And then here I think I castled. a5 was also good. How was a5 good? I don't understand how this is good. miss c takes b4 oh i see but then he has that pawn right castles and then i want to go here but can he just get behind the pawn and then i get in front of the pawn oh he's got to move his knight that's right so e4 looks good yeah and then d3. I, I think a move like rook d8 makes more sense, but d8, how does he stop me from queening actually? I mean, what happens if I just. He must, yeah, he can, he can blockade. It gives away the pawn, though. So you can play c6. And then he's just queening faster. No, not really. He's got to take. But the issue is he can check me. So if I, if I push, he takes. I take. He pushes. I can't get back if I go behind the pawn. Sure, but he has a check on the back rank. Yeah, so it doesn't matter. He can check and then promote. And then I have to sack the rook and I'm down in exchange. Bishop d8. So bishop d8 here was good. I kind of thought these moves were bad that he was playing, but they're all the best moves. Shows how much I know about pawn play. So here I was thinking when I after I after I played rook or bishop d8 and then back. I think rook b rook b7. is rook b to d8 so just completely ignore everything because he's gonna take a lot of time to get over there maybe but i thought this made sense and he plays if he played king f1 i would go rook b7 but like look at my rooks this is the problem i'm playing so it's not that this doesn't stop the pawns because it does like, I mean, yeah, he can't push here because then he would lose, right? He would lose a pawn. But my, my rooks are so passive. My bishop is passive. His rooks are at least a little bit more engaged. They can swing over. They can start attacking things. My rooks are just stuck. Like, this is the plan I was going for. That's the problem. It's not that it doesn't stop the pawns. It's that I'm worried too much about stopping the pawns. So here, if I would have just went rook, it says king f7. That feels so weird to play. If, but let's say rook d8, rook a to a3. Yeah, 
Yeah, so I can't push. Now, what am, what is my plan here? Uh, maybe bishop g5. No, g6. I think it wants me to fee and kettle my bishop. Okay, let's go back. Let's go to, into the game though. A5, good. Knight e4, good. Bishop e7, best. And then rook a to b1 is best. Knight d2 is not bad though, it's the third best move. And then king f7 again. Rook f to d8. So I went for this plan, which remember is a bad plan. But rook b6 is the better of the two. And now e4. I looked at e4, but I did not understand why that's a good move. Bishop f6 is okay. Then I thought knight e4 was going to be good here, or potentially good. And he played it later, but king f1 is best, so kudos to the opponent. King f7 for me is best. I put, I put my rook on another super inactive square. And he played rook d3, which is best. That's crazy. I don't understand that move at all. After it thinks more, it says it's not best, though. It says rook a3. But I don't understand rook d3 at all. This move makes zero sense to me. But the engine likes it. And now rook f3 is better. Knight e4 is good too. I saw knight e4, and then maybe I should have went king e7. It says king g8, just get your king out of there. And then king e2 or rook f3. I played rook f3, which I thought was pretty good. King g7, I went king e7. I know I'm lined up with the rook, but it's like there's a couple pawns here, so I thought I would be safe. But looks like it wants me to go back. Or even up. It says up is better. That's wild. King e2. I went and played g4, which actually this, this move makes a lot of sense to me. Bishop h4 is a decent move, but it's plus almost plus 2. So let's look at that line, because that's the line I played. So what is the best move here? So g5, and then I was going to play h6. Oh, it says h5. Why? H5. I don't know, H6 makes more sense to me. Because then I can get my... It says G6 is better than... G6 is better? How? And then king e2. The only thing I don't like about this is good. Well, he can actually do that. Yeah, I don't know. My so I mean, I can see why this is better for white now that I'm thinking about it concretely. I'm up a pawn, but look at where my rooks are. Like this rook is gonna take two moves to get back into the game. I my c pawn is weak. I can't easily go king d6 to protect it. Everything is just it's just not good positionally. So I definitely think I, I've learned a lot from this game. It's a, it's a shame my opponent wasn't able to continue the smackdown, but hopefully uh, they're doing all right. And I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you back tomorrow.